Hey guys, welcome to the two phases of enlightenment. When I was seeking for clarity, when I was seeking for that which is always already here, when I was seeking for enlightenment, a lot of teachers talked about presence, a lot of teachers talked about what's here now in terms of presence, and a lot of teachers talked about awareness. And at some point I got a little confused, are these two different things? They talked about it as if they were the same exact thing, and it was never, in my experience, very clearly addressed that there is a distinction between these two um, aspects, if you will, of existence, these aspects of life. But I found that there's a, a definite difference, at least in the feeling state of it, um, between these two faces or these two aspects of enlightenment. So the purpose of this lesson is to explain some of the bullet points that I gave you in the first lesson, which was just an experiential introduction for you to read through these bullet points, these potential definitions of the difference between the I am and the I, I. And I will go through that list again, but this time I will give some explanation to some of them. So the first one was, in I am, awareness is the I, and presence energy is the M. So the M literally defines the beingness aspect of it, the presence aspect of it. The I defines the awareness that then is aware of the presence aspect of it. So together, I am is literally awareness wrapped around presence energy. Presence energy when awareness wraps itself around that, the energy that everything requires in order for there to be experience. When awareness wraps itself around the I am, it generates that sense, that feeling, that feeling state of the existential, ever-present I am. Now, if you were to, in a sense, remove the sense of emness, the focus on presence energy would loosen up. What you would be left with in that sense is the I, or simply awareness aware of being aware, rather than awareness aware of the presence of life or of the presence of energy. Presence consciousness is I am. Pure awareness is simply I. So that's what I just explained. Presence is felt as presence beingness. Awareness is felt as emptiness beingness. So the difference here, this is an interesting term, um, because the sense of beingness usually is associated with the sense of I am, right? So it's presence energy that generates the sense of being. But it's not entirely true to say that awareness itself has no sense of beingness whatsoever, because it still exists, it's still aware of itself, and it has some sense of I am too. But to call that I am would then be confusing. So let's call that emptiness beingness instead of presence beingness. It's a sense of beingness that's not filled up with energy in a sense. It's not filled up with the sense of I'm here now. There is this presence. There is this vividness of life, of the substance of the energy that makes up all of existence. When that's sort of let go of, the I that remains still has a sense of its own I am, its own I exist, but it's very empty. It's emptied out from the denser phase of enlightenment, the denser aspect of enlightenment, the denser aspect of existence, which would be that sense of presence energy, that sense of being aware of presence energy. So now it's simply awareness, aware of itself as awareness. So there's still the I am, but it's on a much subtler, um, less dense level. So it feels more like an emptiness or a vastness, isness, rather than an emness. Presence is in front. Awareness is back, around, and throughout. So this is just one way of saying it. Like these location-oriented definitions, they're never accurate because even in presence, there is no real location. But just to make it more experiential for you, you could say temporarily that presence is in front of you, right? So when you're aware of the M, when I is aware of M, it's 
as if awareness is looking at an object in front of itself. The object simply being not a single object within creation, but the very substratum of creation itself. That's the emness, that's the pure beingness. That's presence energy. So, but it can almost feel like it is in front of you. Like awareness is over here. I am the awareness that is then aware of the emness of presence energy. So awareness then is in a sense behind or back, backwards. That can, that sense can be created when you recognize the I, the awareness. It can almost feel like it's behind you rather than in front of you. Again, these are just temporary definitions and distinctions to make it experientially clearer. They're not things to absolutely hold on to because again, location is simply an illusion generated inside of presence awareness. And we could say it's around, it's around presence and it is throughout presence. In other words, the around presence, if you imagine, or if you look at that graph that you can find in the essential library, the essentials, um, the self-realization map, you will see that the big circle forms the, um, forms presence energy, represents presence energy. And it is surrounded by an atmosphere of consciousness. So the pure awareness that then is wrapped around that sphere of presence energy, sort of like the atmosphere of planet Earth is wrapped around the presence, the more dense version that is Earth. And the atmosphere is lighter, it's freer, it's more vibrant in a sense, it's more empty, less dense, less solid. So similarly, um, awareness surrounds presence energy. That can be a sensation or that can be one analogy to reference that distinction. And then awareness is throughout presence energy, throughout the I am-ness, the emness. The I pervades the emness. The way to tune into this is to realize that you can never have an experience. Experience always consists of presence energy, the substance that makes it visible, the substance that makes it, um, that makes it experiential in a sense. The substance itself would be the presence energy which then generates that sense of I am, the emness. But awareness is always there, meaning that at any location, quote unquote location, or any reality that you choose to be conscious of, any configuration of the presence energy um, equation of existence itself, any particular configuration of energy that is possible, doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter what time it's at, doesn't matter what it's doing, Awareness is right there. It's confirmed to be right there. So it's also throughout presence energy. Presence is defined, awareness is undefined. So presence is defined in the sense that it is itself an object. It is itself observable. It is itself noticeable. It is itself a thing we could say energy is a thing it's a presence so in that sense it's defined whereas awareness is much less defined if at all so we could say awareness is undefined you can't really find awareness you can't really define awareness because awareness would simply be that which is aware of your definition whereas the definition consists of defined presence energy so presence is defined awareness is undefined Presence is dense, awareness is weightless. So this simply refers to what it, in a sense, feels like. So presence feels like it's dense, not necessarily in a negative way, not dense in terms of, you know, like a really stupid person can be dense or like thick headed, but dense in the terms, in terms of dense with energy, dense with presence, dense with life itself, dense with the vibrancy of existence itself. Um, whereas awareness, in a sense, feels more weightless. So presence energy feels very free. It's very always already here. It's very stable, very defined, very present, very dense with life. However, it is dense with life. So it, there is a certain sense of density to the I am, to the presence. I am feels dense, feels present, feels stable. It's like the foundation of a house, like the cement that forms the foundation of a house. But awareness feels more like it's spacious, like it's free, like it's weightless. Presence is energy. Awareness is space. 
So again, this is just a way to feel into the difference between these two. Presence literally is energy and awareness, you know, we couldn't say literally is space because again, space is simply one of the illusions that awareness generates within itself. But in terms of the feeling state of it, it feels much more like space. And so when you recognize space rather than the objects or the energy within the space, you start to get that, that feeling, that distinction between presence and the eye, the spacious eye that surrounds and pervades um, the presence energy. Presence is substratum. Awareness is the intelligence that can use the substratum. A little later on, we'll get more into this, um, like the different functions of presence energy and awareness and how their functions are different and how their origin story is different, what their purpose is. But simply see presence energy or presence as the substratum of all that is, the usable clay in a sense for the, um, for the artist to shape into forms, into different shapes and forms. So awareness is the intelligence that can then use the substratum. Awareness is what gives things intelligence. Um, awareness is what shapes reality. Presence is present. Awareness is aloof. Now, not so much aloof. Again, this is not a negative idea, being aloof um, in the way that I use it here. Aloof here simply means that it doesn't need to focus on something. It doesn't have to be present. Presence cannot not be present, but awareness can, in a sense, in a sense, not be present, meaning it can not be present to presence. It will always still be present as itself on its own timeless scale, its own timeless level, but it doesn't have to be as present as we often make it out to be. So in that sense, presence is bound to be present, to feel present, Whereas awareness can feel more aloof. It can feel more oblivious to the presence energy of creation. It can be simply in its own free spacious state with no knowledge or awareness in that moment, for a moment, of presence or of a location or of being here now. So in that sense, it has the privilege of being able to be or remain aloof if it wants to. Presence is love. Awareness is free. So the first distortion, the first expression from absolute infinite unity, the absolute one, the infinite one, was freedom, free will, free agency, free awareness, the ability, the pure intelligence that was then the workable form, the actionable form of infinity. That is awareness, that is freedom, that is free will, that is free choice, that is the freedom to move and to shape and to use infinite intelligence. Now then followed love or presence, Presence energy or that substratum energy for all that is literally is love because it forms all that is. So innate to presence energy, there will always be love, what love truly is, not just the feeling of love, but the fact of love, the reality of love, which is that it is always already here. It's everywhere and everything consists of that same one substance. That is love, that inseparability, that union of, of energy, that um, dependency on presence is love. Presence can be imagined as a formless field and awareness is simply formless entirely. So presence energy can be, can be explained as a field, as a field of unlimited potential, undifferentiated presence energy love, presence love energy, right? But awareness is even more formless. It's even subtler than being able to be imagined as a field of presence. It's so subtle that it doesn't have a form of its own. It is entirely formless. Presence is the manifest greater self. Awareness is the unmanifest greater self. Just, just wordplay again, but it's a way to make a distinction. So we could say that presence energy is the manifest aspect or face of your greater self, the greater self we all seek. Whereas awareness is the unmanifest, greater self. Presence is the love light substance which lies at the basis of all that is. We've explored that in depth in the first course, Enlightenment One. Awareness is what gives it shape, consciousness, purpose, and intelligence. So you know by now that presence is the love light substance which lies at the basis 
of all that is, of all forms that can ever potentially be. And awareness is what gives it shape, consciousness, purpose, and intelligence. It is that free agency principle that has the ability to move, to shape things, to project itself in different ways, to use the clay, to use the substance of all that is, to form different intelligent patterns of energy that then generate everything that is in the way that it is, such as our everyday patternized, seemingly intelligent, um, solid existence. That's all the cause of awareness, blending its intelligence, its free, free will, its ability to move, to shape, and blending that or applying that to presence energy, to the substratum, to love light. Awareness is the spacious universal container, whereas presence is the undifferentiated universal love energy content. Yet another way to make that distinction, to feel into that distinction. Contents and a container for the contents. No, not a container that is itself physical, not a container that has itself form, but a formless container. Awareness is the formless container for the energy of presence to form the contents of. Presence is here and everywhere where there is form or manifestation. So presence is here and quote unquote, everywhere where there is form or manifestation. Where there's the presence of form, there's presence, obviously. Awareness is nowhere and everywhere, but beyond the scope of form or manifestation. So it's a slightly different, it's a subtle distinction, but it's a slightly different um, way of describing where it is. It is nowhere and everywhere, and yet it is beyond the scope of presence. It's beyond the limitation, in a sense, beyond the limitation of form or manifestation. Presence is time itself. Awareness is timeless. Now this one may be, I realize, a little bit confusing at this point, but we'll get into that later in different courses and um, to an extent in this course. But presence is time itself. But isn't presence timeless? In a sense, but it's timeless in comparison to how we think of time. It's not linear. However, presence energy is itself time. Time itself is presence energy. To be present means to be time. To be consciously time, to be present. Presence therefore is time. It's the essence of all of time. So all different times are simply different manifestations of presence, of time. Awareness is timeless. It is absolutely timeless, meaning that, again, it's beyond the scope of presence. It's beyond the con contents of its formless um, that it contains as its self being the formless container. So awareness itself is beyond the scope of time. Presence is time. Awareness is free from time. Presence is the accumulation of all potential workforce available. Awareness is the manager of this workforce. Again, similarly, it's the intelligence that's able to utilize the workforce, the energy, the potency, the potential that is love light energy, that is presence. Presence is the visible contents of a movie and awareness can be likened to the invisible director that made it all happen the way that it did. So when you're watching a movie, you can see all the contents. That's what you're watching. You can perceive and observe the defined aspect of the movie, which is the actors, the storyline, the, the, um, the words that are being spoken, etc., the scenery, but you can't see the director. But the director is what used it in its intelligence, the director used his or her intelligence to shape the contents of the movie so that you can then have the movie experience. Similarly, what you perceive it consists of presence, but you, the perceiver, but also the creator of those shapes and contents can be likened to awareness. When awareness meets presence, presence energy becomes presence consciousness. So you're familiar with this by now, at least to some extent. So when awareness meets or merges or becomes aware of the availability, the potential of love light, which is presence energy itself, substratum of all that is, then presence energy becomes intelligently infused with awareness 
But since there is that subject-object relationship at that point, because there's awareness and there's beingness or presence, we call it consciousness. But it's the same thing. Consciousness is awareness simply in a distorted or merged or blended or differentiated form where there is some kind of subject-object relationship. Presence hooks you into the world that your consciousness is presently creating. Awareness lets you up the hook. Meaning that when you focus on presence, it literally sort of hooks you and sucks you into the here and now with all the form that that brings along. But when you, in a sense, start recognizing awareness, the I in the I am equation, it lets you off the hook. Again, that aloofness principle where it does not need to be focused on presence and here and now in order for it to be spontaneously, naturally, effortlessly empty in an empty way, vastly here and now, just as its own restful, spacious self without the need to focus down on any type of reality. So in that sense, awareness, the focus on awareness lets you off the hook. Whereas the focus on presence, liberating as it is, has a little bit that sense of I amness and the presence and the density of it. Not a bad thing at all. It's very, very helpful. It's very, very vivid. And ideally, you have both of these realizations. So don't judge presence now for being dense. Presence is manifest as physical, quasi-physical and non-physical energy. But in comparison to awareness, presence seems dense and awareness seems completely non-physical or even unmanifest. So there is physical energy. There is like presence energy can manifest itself as physicality. It can manifest itself as sort of quasi-physicality and it can manifest itself as completely non-physical energy. These are just different subtler states of energy like ice, water, and steam. Steam could be equated to non-physicality. Water could be equated to quasi or semi-physicality. And the ice state of presence energy, or in this equation, H2O, could be defined as physical energy. Just an analogy. And, but in comparison to even the steam-like non-physical energy of creation, awareness seems even more quote-unquote non-physical, even more unmanifest. Presence is the devoted slave energy. Awareness is the loving and intelligent slaver. Now, funny choice of words perhaps, but presence energy is very much like a slave. Just if we remove the negative connotation that that word has been imbued with, slave simply means at your disposal, means no will of its own, right? So presence energy is slave energy, meaning that it's designed to be slaved by intelligence, by freedom, by free will, by consciousness, by awareness. So awareness is the loving and intelligent slaver of creation. Presence does not have its own will, whereas awareness is pure free will. I've explained this. If presence is the one infinite creator's body, awareness is the one infinite creator's mind. So imagine infinity, imagine unity, imagine the infinite one. Then it starts creating a mind so that that mind, that intelligence, that freedom to move and to navigate and to utilize intelligence, then starts to generate content, starts to generate a love, light, field energy. That love, light, field energy is like the more physicalized version. It's the vehicle, it's the expression of the experience. It is, can be likened to the body. Whereas awareness in that sense can be likened unto being the one infinite creator's mind or intelligence. Presence is the tools. Awareness is the means by which the tools are used. So another subtle way to explain this difference. Con um, presence can be likened until the tool, um, like the tools, like the hammer and all that stuff, like screwdriver. But the using of it is less defined. Like you can't really, the means by which it is used, in this case, our body and our hands and our intelligence, it cannot be pinpointed as much as the tools can. It is the working force, it is the intelligence that makes the tools move, that uses the tools. Presence is the wood, hammer, and nails. Awareness is the carpenter, which can come in, use the tools to create something, and then leave the tools and its creation alone, the aloofness idea, 
and exist independent of the tools and their state or location. It can exist as its own I, I awareness. It's I realizing I. And it does not have to remain present to the presence of its creation or the tools with which it created, which are all created out of presence energy. So again, it's more undefined. Awareness is less defined than presence energy. It's less located. It's less dense. It's more unfindable. Presence can be found and located by being witnessed. Awareness is unlocatable and can only be found by being acknowledged as being aware. So you can locate presence. This is similar to the idea of it being in front of you in a sense. You can't really see what's behind you. You can only see what's in front of you. You can't really see the seer or the seeing, but you can see what you're seeing. So presence is like that. You can locate it, you can find it. It's right here, it's present. You can notice it, you can define it. You can, in a sense, lock it in, say, this is what it is. Awareness is subtler, once again. It's in comparison, completely unmanifest. And so it can only be found through subtler means. You need a little bit more of an uh, intelligent awareness to recognize intelligent awareness. You need to recognize the subtlety of the fact that observation is going on right now. You need to notice that there is an awareness of this moment rather than trying to find the awareness of this moment. So it's simply by acknowledging that you are being aware that you in a sense become aware of awareness, but you can't find it or locate it because you can't really witness it as you would witness the energy of presence. So, neither option is better than any of the other options or than the other option. So one phase of enlightenment doesn't mean more necessarily than the other phase. They're just different aspects and both ought to be appreciated. And in my experience, it's very valuable to appreciate both of them equally because it's really liberating to be able to be really present with presence energy, to utilize your free awareness, to be really, really present with presence energy, with this moment, with the here and the now. It's very potent, it's very helpful. It's also very helpful for the empowerment teachings, for becoming a more empowered being. It's very crucial, so don't dismiss presence per se, but for the purpose of this course, do place the emphasis a little bit more on the not any better, but simply subtler, phase of enlightenment, which is, or aspect of enlightenment, which is that of emptiness being, that of free awareness, that of free agency, that of the awareness principle itself. And discover, if you will, that you can, in a sense, remain as the I, and you don't need, you don't need to, you don't have to focus on presence anymore. That's a very liberating thing that you don't have to be concerned with presence energy all the time. So for the homework for this lesson, I want you to simply notice the difference. So you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Do this for about five to 10 minutes in one single sitting in a sense. And you can bring this with you into everyday life experiences. But what you do is you become really present to presence energy. You start to notice the presence in things and the presence of this moment and the here and now focus. focus. And you will find that it focuses, it in a sense almost narrows awareness down into the presence, the substratum of existence. Still expansive, especially comparatively to, compared to I am this, or I'm this body, or I am the mind. So it's an expansion focus, but it's still a focus. It's the focus on presence. Now simply relax out of even that, relax and rest as awareness itself. You start noticing, acknowledging that yes, there is this presence, but I am aware of the presence. The I is aware of the M. So together it's the I am. And it creates the feeling I am. But you can notice that I is aware of M. I is aware of M. I is aware of M. And so simply practice this. Go into the presence and then notice that you, I, are, is, aware of presence. Notice presence and notice your awareness of the presence. Go back and forth like this for five minutes, um, consecutive, five consecutive minutes. So in one sitting, 
And then you do this a few times a day, just to, as a little mini meditation throughout your everyday life experiences, just to really get yourself grounded in that sense of presence and then to notice the spaciousness that surrounds the presence, the awareness that is aware of the presence. And just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as often as you'd like. And then when you feel comfortable with this idea, when you start noticing some of these differences that I've explained and described, and again, you can use the list as you found it in the first lesson of this course to sharpen or fine tune those differences in your own insight, in your own recognition. And then when you feel comfortable with this distinction, with the difference, and you can sort of see that you can either be present to presence, or you can sort of be more aloof. In a sense, I would almost say freer and simply rest as awareness itself. When you start noticing this and this becomes experiential, simply proceed to the next lesson. Thanks for your time. Thank you.